Hello guys, my name is Jesper Nissen, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can force ChatGPT to include entities into your content. And if you like this video, you got anything out of it, please comment below with ChatGPT loves entities. So let's get to it. Let's say that you're writing an article about your favorite subject and you want to include some entities in the content because you know that it helps your rankings in Google. Um, so first of all, let's, uh, let's see how we can actually get some entities. So what I do is I use schema writer because uh, of course I design schema writer, so I have access to it. And what I do is I search for my key term, my search term in the, this example, I'm going for web page schema. That's my search term. And over here to the right, there is a column called additional entities. And all of these entities are actually recognized by Google as proper Google entities. So these entities here, the on page entities and the competitor entities, they are the entities that either I have in my content or that the competitors have in their content. And uh, they are, of course, they're relevant, but they're actually this is what's most relevant because the way that we find these entities is that we actually take this search term and then we append Wikipedia in the, to the search term in Google in the, in the API. And then we can actually be, we will be able to extract the entities that are relevant to your search term. And you won't be able to actually find these entities anywhere because if you're using Google Knowledge Graph API, if you're, if you're using Google NLP API, they won't show you these entities. They won't, they'll show you some of the entities, but they won't show you all because <clears throat> it's kind of like giving the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. Um, of course, Google won't show you 100% what are the entities that's related to your search term. They won't do that. Uh, but uh, but we are we are providing them to you. If you don't have access to um, to we to Schema Writer, so what you can do is you can of course go into ChatGPT, and let me just start out by greeting ChatGPT. Hello, uh, and let's see what is it, how can I assist you? How is your your day? We want to be nice to our machine overlords. All right, so um, my search term is web page schema. So let me just start off by give me a list of the six most topically relevant entities to the keyword web page schema. Good. Let's see what it comes. Something seems to have gone wrong. It does this some, sometimes, but let's uh, let's try once more. Uh, let me let me just click stop because what I forgot is I of course I I need to do this. Right? I need to give me a list without description. Give me an unnumbered list. Yeah, you need to you need to remember this all the time. So uh, okay, so it comes up with structured data schema.org SEO. Uh, yeah, it's not bad actually, but uh, I'll I'll stick to I'll stick to my own entities. So I actually uh, I actually have a list here, and do, 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 do. where is it? Two seconds. This is the list. Yeah, so I actually ha I have a list here, but but let me come back to that later. Um, because I I gave you, I've I've written this uh, entity prompt overview because what I'm going I'm I'm about to show you is an entity prompt. So the entity prompt overview has five parts. First of all, of course, you need to define the topic of the content. So we are writing about the keyword that is in my case web page schema. So you need to define the target audience and the writing style. So what I find is that if I do not define um, if I don't define the target audience and if I don't define the writing style, it can become quite generic. Um, and especially step three is super important because I don't know about you. I'm using ChatGPT4, so that's the paid version. It costs $20 per month. But I don't know about you. When I'm using ChatGPT4 now or 3.5, it's just 
bananas. It's delving and it's, uh, you know, it's using words like delve. It's super dramatic. Sometimes it's even writing poetry. Even when I'm writing about computer science or search engine optimizations, hardcore topics, it's poetic and it's dramatic and it's you, you can't use it for anything. You need to really be specific. I'm going to show you what I do. So spice up content is just a small trick that I use. And I'm going to show you that. And keywords to include, that's the actual entities. Um, so let me get into it. And let me actually show you something right out the gate. So let me, let me show you an example of what it does right now. Write me a paragraph about the topic web page schema. Doot. And let's see what it comes up with. I'll just click pause. Okay, that's actually not uh, that's actually not too bad. Uh, let me let me try once more because if I type like this, write me an introduction about the topic web page schema. <laughs> yeah. So it seems that if you're using the word introduction, let's say that you're writing a blog post and you want a beginning of your blog post. So what is the beginning? It's an introduction, right? So if you're using the word introduction, somehow it, it triggers this nonsense in the ever evolving landscape of the internet. The concept of web page schema has emerged as a cornerstone for, yeah. I mean, it, it is correct, but it's, uh, it's a little bit too poetic, right? So, um, so what I do is uh, let me actually just do here. Uh, actually, I use this. Explain what web page schema is. Let's see what happens. I want the writing style to be very professional. I want the target audience to be SEO professionals. Let's see what it does. So whenever I engineer my prompts, if I see a, a word or keyword that I don't like, uh, let me show you what I do. For example, I am not too fond of the word utilizes. Uh, it's not, the word utilizes is not something that I would typically use when I'm writing. I'm not, I'm Danish, I'm not a native English speaker. I don't know about you guys, but utilize seems I don't know, seems a little bit, I don't, I just, just don't like it. So what I do is I use these specific language instructions. So <clears throat> what I have here is do not make the concept dramatic. Avoid words like crucial and vital and you say lies. Uh, instead of words like also use change because I see that ChatGPT, and I again, I don't know why it, instead of change, you can change this to that, it uses the word also, and it doesn't make sense at all. It makes sense, but it just sounds generic and artificial. Do not use the word facilitate, because it's, I don't know, it also likes facilitate. Do not use the word delve, for obvious reason, we don't, we hate that word. Instead of as referenced by use in, as defined in. Because what I see when I'm writing SEO articles and technical stuff, it uses this term a lot as referenced by. So let's see what it does now. Good. I'll just click pause. Yeah, it's actually not it's not too bad now. Uh, actually, it's it's almost done. But I know that I didn't include all of the entities. So what I will be doing now is I will be using. Uh, this here and this here. So the this is you know add some bullet points to highlight to highlight important points. Only include keywords in the bullet points that are directly related related to web page schema. So what I'm asking ChatGPT about here is to only include keywords in the bullet points that are directly related to web page schema. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that ChatGPT understands what web page schema is. But because I'm giving these keywords, it will know what in what um, content universe we live in because schema.org, sitemap, XML schema, website, wireframe, semantic web, these five entities, they are they define actually pretty solid what the universe we are living in. 
so let me show you the result of the entire prompt. Let's see here. Good. And I'll just click pause. <clears throat> so what you can see is, and this is, I, I really like this. So what you can see is that it's now writing these bullet points and it's, it's actually, I didn't ask for this, but it's actually doing this on its own. So it's putting them as in bold and it's, it's actually taking the entities or at least four of the entities it's actually putting them as bullet points in bold and then it's it's actually explaining to me and to you what is schema.org and what is xml schema and you know so so actually what i have here is uh, i don't know may, how many words probably four or five hundred words 400 words perhaps and it could be it, it needs to be modified, of course, it needs to be edited, it needs to get that human touch, and I can't ask ChatGPT to do that because ChatGPT is not a human. So I would need to use a couple of minutes to edit this. I would I would never publish this on my website, never. Uh, not like this. I would always edit it. Even if I think I have the world's best entity prompt, I wouldn't rely on the output. But actually, I can actually do a little bit better because I tried yesterday. Uh, so. I'm telling it to explain what web page schema is, but I could actually, I think I could do better because explain, uh, uh, explain very short. Let's see what happens. Explain very short. I'm not English. Can you, can you ask for that? I can ask it. Does it understand it? I don't know. Let's see, it's thinking a little bit more now I can see. So probably, uh, okay, so no. Uh, I actually, I like the other version better. Uh, so actually, I like this sentence better. Web page schema is a method for structured, structuring data on a web page. I, I like this a lot because it's very precise. So this is extremely short, but mm, I, I actually, I like this output better. So yeah, so there you have it. That's my uh, that's my that is my procedure for using for incorporating entities into my content. Um, so I'll place this prompt that I have here, uh, the uh, prompt up here, explain what web page scheme is, and so on and so forth. I'll place it in the description in the YouTube videos. You can just scroll down and, and simply copy this prompt and use it with your own keywords. And this is in English. So if I translate this to Danish, for example, it of course it won't work. I could ask it to you know write in Danish, but then it wouldn't won't won't work because we don't use delve and facilitate. Actually, we we do have a word in Danish that's very close to facilitate. So I mean, if you're Danish or if you're Romanian or if you're whatever language, you, you need to come up with words on your own that you don't like that ChatGPT is using. But um, yeah, I think it makes sense. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. Take care.